So this month's red flag weather has seen multiple fires through California. The smoky skies can mean breathing trouble for vulnerable adults and also children. And here with tips on dealing with poor air quality during fire season is Dr. Eli Hendel. He is a pulmonologist with Dignity Health Glendale Memorial Hospital. Uh, thank you so much for being here, Doctor. We really me. appreciate it. So let's talk about this. Everybody's, you know, feeling the effects, whether it's just, you know, itchy eyes um, or they're actually coughing. Who is most at risk? Well, I divide into two broad categories. Those who have problems with the airways, the bronchi, and those are the asthmatics. Mm -hmm. And those who have the more consequences of having low oxygen, and those are patients with COPD and heart disease. Mm -hmm. So there's five elements to the air quality index. The most important ones are carbon monoxide and the PM2.5. Those are particles that are 2.5 microns. Carbon monoxide is more dangerous to those who are in the immediate vicinity of the fires. The PM2.5 are the ones that will blow through the wind and will affect people living distantly over the, uh, from the fires. So the asthmatics are more vulnerable to the PM2.5. So to give you an indication, um, hair is 60, 60 microns. Um, uh, particles that are 10 microns do not enter the lungs. They get trapped by the nose and by the throat. 2.5 enter the lungs. And you can get those counts, the PM2.5 count, in the air quality index. Um, to give you an indication, in Shanghai, a 880 uh, microns per cubic meter, which is considered hazardous, is 120 days of the year. It's equivalent to smoking two cigarettes a day. Every day. If you're not a smoker. Oh. But that's some of the worst air quality in the planet. That is the worst right. air quality. But you can see what the air quality is daily by looking at uh, the air quality index. Uh, and there's 40 measuring stations throughout the LA basin, so it's going to be different than different parts wherever you are. So the asthmatics breathe those particles and the airways get swollen, so have difficulty moving air. Those patients with COPD have difficulty in getting oxygen from the air to the blood because the structure of the lungs is different. Air goes places that blood doesn't go and vice versa. Right. And patients with heart disease have the heart rate faster and don't grab the oxygen right. either. So they're more vulnerable to the carbon monoxide and the asthmatics more than to, to the particles. How bad does it have to get to not go outside? Well, the air quality index 50 or below is normal, it's healthy. Between 50 and 100 is considered moderate. Between 100 and 150, it's unhealthy for those with uh, sensitive conditions such as asthma and COPD. 150 to 200 is unhealthy for everybody. Right. 200 is hazardous. And 300 is very hazardous and those can you be easily obtain. Is there a thing you recommend doing for homeowners out there? Let's say someone's watching in Canyon Country. Do they put filters in? Do they keep their windows closed? What's the best way to make, I guess, the inside air yeah, that, the, that's the least an, harmful? That's an excellent question because indoor air quality is a different animal. And that's defined, and there are testers out there that you can test the PCO2 and the, and the, and the CO2 mm -hmm. in parts per million. The acceptable CO2 level is 1,000 parts per million. CO2 reflects two things the number of people in the room, and the adequate ventilation, because air has to exchange with the outdoors two, two and a half times per hour. And that's how you defend the adequacy of the air. Um, when there are fires, you obviously should have the windows closed and you have the air condition. Um, they are, I do recommend air filters. They're called HEPA filters, high efficient particulate. And make sure that it says HEPA certified. The U.S. Department of Agriculture certifies machines that clear 99% of all the particles. They are those who don't and just say HEPA-like. Mm -hmm. Those are not certified. Okay, we have two more questions I really want to get to. First of all, when do you think like, it's so bad that you really should go to the ER or you should go see your doctor and it's not just a nuisance anymore, it's, it's serious? Yeah, well, I have a relationship with my patients that I tell them exactly that. And in asthmatics, for example, there's a sequence of treatment. Um, you start with one and you go to the next level and then next level and finally the steroids and finally go to the emergency room. So a clear setup of communication with your doctors when to go to the emergency room. Um, asthmatics are more of a problem because they don't realize when they're really short of breath. Right. I, a lot of my COPD patients have testers for the oxygen saturation. They put it in the finger and I tell them when it goes below 90. 
Andy. That's something that I uh, should not do. They have, fortunately, now oxygen is delivered by concentrators, which don't have flammable oxygen. And there's some f small uh, portable concentrators that uh, are light. Yeah. I'm going to get R selfish here. I know. No, no, because <laughs> we're in fires a lot, and we yeah. know people out there are in fires. Yeah. <laughs> what can we do? At, like I was told, can we go into a steam room? Will that help maybe alleviate? Because we have to be there, and a yeah, lot of like people take off yeah. their masks. Yeah. After these fires, so what? What can we do? What can they do yeah. after a fire to, to help the lungs yeah. get back to? Two things. Um, there is the effects of the smoke and the fire, and there's the after fire. Uh, places are not. I, I saw you were showing houses that were halfly burned. Mm -hmm. They're not exactly safe. Oh, not at all. To because, breathe around that. Yeah. yeah. Because all the smoke has turned into soot. And that soot has carbon monoxide also. Um, when there is water and there's fire, there's mold. And those have spores that as soon as you clean up, they, co they go up in the air. So the, in some cases, the fire department has to clear a place before going. The most studied group of people who were uh, affected Years later, were the early responders for 9/11. Exactly. They yeah, were we exposed not only to smoke, but to particles of humans, of buildings, of steel, of acrylics. anything that burned up. They were breathing. Yeah. Right. Right, right, right. And unfortunately, there's carcinogens. The most uh, likely ones are what they call the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PAHs. And there is a, a website that tells the degree of the PAHs. The worst one are benzene and formaldehyde, which are the products of fire as well. Mm -hmm. Doctor, thank you so much for being yeah, here. Thanks, We're going to give people you. information uh, on breathing safety during fire season. It is available online at glendalememorialhospital.org. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Okay, we'll be right back. We'll be right back.